Today, I'd like to bring you along as I review the MRI of a brain of someone impacted by multiple sclerosis. Now, fair warning, it's a pretty active scan. Don't turn away because all of that starts right now. Here you see two different sequences of the same brain. On the left-hand side is a water-based image called a flare-weighted image, and on the right-hand side is after the administration of the contrast dye. In both cases, the person is laying down flat on the back of their head, looking up at the ceiling. You see the nose at the top of the page. As we scroll from the bottom of the brain up, we come across our first concerning lesion, which I've circled in red. This part of the brain is called the middle cerebellar peduncle and it's involved in balance and coordination. And it stands to reason the patient shares that she was walking around like she was drunk, even though she assures me that she was not. On the right-hand side, the post-contrasted study, we see that there's abnormal contrast enhancement, and more specifically, there's ring enhancement. This teaches us that this lesion is brand spanking new because the breach of the blood-brain barrier and the leaking out of the dye from the blood vessel into the brain only occurs for a few weeks when the lesion is brand new. As we continue to scroll up, we find another large concerning lesion, again highlighted in red. This location is the posterior frontal lobe on the right, and after the administration of contrast, we see abnormal contrast enhancement in a U-shaped pattern. This is highlighting the juxtacortical location. As we scroll up a little farther, we see two lesions one is circled in red and the other circled in yellow. When you look at the post-contrasted sequence, you can see that they both take up abnormal contrast. This tells us that both of these lesions are new and active. Moving up even further, we come across yet another concerning lesion with abnormal contrast enhancement. This person has an extremely active scan. In total, I counted nine enhancing lesions, although I'm not pointing out every single one of them. Now, as we reach almost the very top of the head, we come across yet one more concerning inflammatory lesion with abnormal contrast enhancement. The patient was successfully treated with high-dose corticosteroids and her ataxic gait fully recovered. Here's a follow-up MRI several months later. Fortunately, there are no new or enlarged T2 lesions noted. Also good news, the follow-up MRI revealed no new abnormal contrast enhancement, and all the enhancing lesions seen previously had all resolved. The new scan did reveal, however, several new T1 black holes. These are areas where the periods of inflammation were so severe that they literally ate away at the tissue of the brain, leaving literally a black hole. It's also important to note that on the follow-up scan, we appreciate accelerated brain volume loss or accelerated brain atrophy or shrinkage. Here in red, you see the third ventricle. In a woman this age, that space should be closed, and yet it's pretty broad. The MRI is a powerful biomarker. It's a very useful tool in assessing someone with multiple sclerosis. As we see here, this person with MS had extremely active disease with multiple new bright spots and many, many enhancing lesions. I'm delighted to share that we gave this woman steroids and she made a very meaningful clinical recovery. And on follow-up scans, there was no further enhancement, which is extremely reassuring. As always, thank you for learning about MS with me. And until my next video, this is Aaron Boster saying be safe and take care.